Welcome everybody to Our Green Acres. And if you are new to my channel, welcome and my name is Teresa. Do y'all remember in my last video, I picked these little plaques up from Dollar Tree and I did some projects with these. Well, today I'm gonna to show y'all some more Dollar Tree products that I got and I'm gonna give you some ideas and inspiration on how we can turn these into some really fun projects. And we're gonna do it all on a budget. We're not gonna spend a lot of money, but we're gonna have a lot of fun. Recently, my Dollar Tree was stocked full of these little ceramic, I guess these are like ornaments. I thought these ornaments would be beautiful decoupage. So I went out to Etsy and I just searched on shabby chic designs and I found these. These were $2.88, y'all. And these are instant downloads. You purchase them, they're sent to your email. You got 18 different sheets of designs. So for $2.88, you can't beat that. So I printed out my sheets on an inkjet printer just using some regular computer paper. Once I got all my sheets printed out, then I just had fun with it. I went through all of my little shapes that I, I was going to use, and I removed the twine hangers. I then took my papers, and I just kind of laid them over my shapes just to see, you know, what graphic and design I wanted on each one. And on this little hang tag, I wanted to capture this little bird cage because I thought it was so cute. But I just applied it using DIY liquid patina, then I run over it with my brayer to smooth it out. Once it dried, I went around the edges with a piece of sandpaper. I got rid of all the excess paper and I just moved off the edges. These little projects right here were so fun to work on. Now, if you see these at your Dollar Tree, I highly recommend picking them up because I'm giving y'all inspiration and ideas of how you can, you know, use them. But also, if you can't find them at Dollar Tree, I did go out to Amazon and I did find some that were similar. So I do have some of these linked to my Amazon store. So if you're not able to find them out at the Dollar Tree, check out my Amazon store. Now remember, I will show you how you can embellish them and put different kind of hangers on them at the end of the video. Now I showed you how you can go out to Etsy and purchase, you know, um, those little designs. But if you don't want to do that, you can also use decoupage paper. You can also use napkins. I'm going to leave a link to a website down below where I get a lot of my decoupage paper. But I had this piece on hand. I have always have decoupage paper on hand. That way, when I'm doing my projects, I've already, I've already got it. And, you know, I can just go in and start, you know, working on my projects with it. But I thought this little piece right here was so appropriate because it's kind of like a little cupid. So I put it on the heart and I just applied it the same way. Using my liquid patina, I applied the paper. Once it dried, I went over it, you know, around the edges with my sanding block and removed the paper and smoothed the edges. And then I sealed it really good on the top. Now here is the little house. The day I went, they only had one house left. So I grabbed it. So I'm going to use a piece of decoupage paper that I have on hand on it. And I love these little birds. I've already used the top of this decoupage paper on a previous project, but I've got this, this part of it still left. But I thought it would be perfect to apply it to the little house. So again, I'm just going to use the same process. I'm just going to apply it using my liquid patina. And remember, you can always use whichever decoupage medium that you prefer. You know, if it's Mod Podge or you want to, you know, just whatever you have on hand and whatever you want to use, but I always get great results with my liquid patina. Now, I went around with my scissors because this little house had some little detailed grooves in it with that little chimney. Just to make it a little bit easier, I removed some of the excess paper using my scissors. I went around and I sanded it, and then I'm going to seal it really good. And now these little project pieces right here were so much fun to make, and you just kind of get creative with it. Here's another beautiful piece of decoupage paper. And like I say, I'm going to have a link to where I got all of these at down in my description box. And also I'll have them pinned in a comment. But I've used some on previous projects, but I still have parts of this piece left because it was 11 by 14. So when you get 11 by 14 piece of decoupage paper, it goes a long way. So I'm going to use this piece and I'm going to apply it to a heart because I got, I got a lot of hearts. And in my Amazon store, I have some of these ceramic heart um, ornaments listed for sure. So if you want some of these hearts and you can't find them at Dollar Tree, like I say, make sure to check out my Amazon store. Because th these little things right here, once you get them made, you can just set them around your home and decorate with them. <clears throat> they make great embellishments for wreaths, baskets. 
you can put these on gift bags and gifts. So, and like I say, they're a lot of fun to make. And I think the recipient, if you gave somebody one of these, I think they would absolutely love it. So just get creative with them and go with whatever theme that you use in your home. There are so many ways that you can make these and embellish them. And I think these hearts would be also be great, of course, around Valentine's. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, I made sure to seal each one on the top and also on the sides. And then just go through and poke through all the holes and that way you can embellish them with any kind of hanger you want. Here's another piece of beautiful decoupage paper and I also made one using it and you'll see it at the end of the video. Today's video is sponsored by Goodpick and I want to tell them a huge thank you for sponsoring today's video. I don't know if y'all know anything about Goodpick, but I'm going to tell y'all a little bit about what they offer. They offer attractive baskets for organizational solutions. They're not only functional, but they're also very decorative. So you can use these baskets throughout your home. They add such a beautiful touch to any room in your home. They make them in all shapes and sizes and colors. When you receive your basket, it will be folded for shipping, but it will return back to its original shape. All you have to do is take it out of the packaging and then you can just start filling it with towels or blankets and that will help shape it. Or you can just shape it out with your hands like I'm doing. You can also iron it out or get a steamer and that will also remove some of the creases. This basket right here is a very good size. It's also got very nice sturdy handles on the ends and that way it is that it just makes it portable around your home to where you can carry it from room to room you can use this in a nursery your living room entryway bedroom you can put your dirty laundry in it and carry it around through your house to your laundry room so it's such a versatile but very decorative basket i absolutely love this and like i say these baskets are very nice quality I'm going to leave a link to their website down below, and I'm also going to have these baskets linked in my Amazon store. So if you want to go out and shop their website, like I say, I will have their information down in my description. And also, make sure to check out my Amazon store because they have so many of these baskets to choose from in different colors, different sizes, and different shapes. They have them for all rooms of your home and make great storage solutions. Now I'm going to show y'all how I created some really pretty shabby chic book stacks. Now if you don't like shabby chic, you can use any kind of theme scrapbook paper that you want. But I'm going to take some pieces of scrapbook paper that I have, and I think I got this book at Walmart on the craft section aisle. So, but I'm just using, you can also get a lot of pretty scrapbook designs um, at Hobby Lobby, and a lot of times you can get them on half off day. So you can get a piece of scrapbook paper really inexpensive. But just to remove the jackets from your hardback books, and I purchased some at Dollar Tree. So, and then I just went and I just kind of measured because I'm just going to use that little book jacket as my pattern for my scrapbook paper. Now, my scrapbook paper will not fit all the way around my book, but that's okay because you'll only see parts of the book. Now, using a really good quality glue stick, I'm going to apply my scrapbook paper, but you can also use spray adhesive if you want to, and you could probably use Mod Podge. But I'm just going to use my glue stick. I just apply it in sections, and then I roll over my scrapbook paper really good just to make sure it's adhering to my book well, and then I just work it in sections. Make sure when you go around the binder of your book, you fold it really well, and it fits on your book, and it is sticking really good. And use as much of the glue stick as you need to. But as you can see on the back of my book, it almost fit, but it didn't. But like I say, you'll never see that because we're going to stack them up. Now I'm just using coordinating colors of scrapbook paper that I thought would work well together. And then again, I'm just take, take, I just took my jacket off. You just want to measure where you want to cut, and I'm using my, my straight cutter. I love this thing. If y'all don't have a straight cutter, a lot of times you can find these very inexpensive, even at Walmart in the craft section. But I just use it to cut my paper just to make sure I've cut it straight. And again, I'm just going to apply this piece to this book, and I'm going to just use the same method. Now, I love to use my brayer, and I'm just rolling over it with my brayer just to smooth it out really well. And a brayer is a really great tool. There, There is like some tools in your supply, in your craft supplies that you just cannot live without, and I think my brayer is one of them. <laughs> but just make sure, like I say, to work that binder down really well 
get it in the creases of your book, and then once you get your books made, stack them up, and then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how I embellish them using some ribbons and some pretty bows. Now I'm going to make another book stack, except I'm going to use soft back books, and you want to remove both the cover, the top and the bottom of the book. So then you want to take some, some fabric, and I'm using some little shabby chic patterns that I have, but you can use any kind of fabric that you want. You just want to cut a strip that will fit around the binder of your book. And again, I'm just going to use my glue stick to work on this project. It worked really well. Just apply the glue on the binder and around the top and the bottom of your book and get that binder, that um, fabric, applied to your book as best as you can. Once it dries, go around with your scissors and then just trim it off. Now I'm going to show you another book that I've already made, but just how pretty the contrasting designs of these fabrics worked. And like I say, I just took some fabrics that I already had on hand and I'm drawing more to the florals and the shabby sheet designs, but you can use any kind of fabrics that you want. Now this was a shirt and I got this at a consignment store a while back for $1. I'm just gonna cut out the button portion of the top and it fit perfect on the binder of these books. So I applied it using my glue stick, adhered it to the binder of the book really well, and now this is a great idea. So y'all, go through your clothes. If you got some old shirts or anything that may be stained and you can't wear it anymore, get it out and let's use it on some book stacks. Okay, our last project are going to be these cute little cutting boards. Now, I paid a dollar each for these at a yard sale. I'm going to go over both of them with a couple of coats of white chalk paint. Because anytime you use decoupage paper, a lot of times you want to paint your background white and that way it'll make your, your decoupage paper really pop. I'm going to use the remainder of that decoupage paper that I've been using throughout the video. We're not going to waste any of it. It is too pretty. But I found a section of it that fit perfect on this little cutting board. So I'm going to apply it and I'm going to show you how we can kind of coordinate the cutting boards. I'm going to do one using decoupage paper and then I'm going to put a stamp on the other one. And we're just gonna, we're gonna put them together using a little piece of flower sack cloth and just kind of make them a pair. And on these little cutting boards, just like the little ceramic pieces I just did, I went over them and I sealed each one on the top and also around the sides. Just poked back through the little hole. Now let's work on the other one. The other one I'm gonna leave white like I painted it. And then I'm gonna take this beautiful bird stamp. Y'all know this is one of my favorite stamps and I've used it in a ton of projects. But it is linked in my Amazon store, but it's one of my favorites, and it's very affordable. But I'm going to apply the little birds. I'm using black ink. I always go around with a baby wipe once you apply your ink, just to make sure you don't have any excess around the edges, so it doesn't get on your project. Let it dry, and now we are going to put these two together. I'm just going to rip up some stained flower sack cloth. I always stain my flower sack cloth using some leftover coffee. And then we're just going to tie knots in each end and make these, you know, a pair. And these right here will be so pretty. You can hang these up or you can hang them on rays. You can just hang them in your kitchen on a pegboard. So many things now you can do with these.
I also want to give y'all a glimpse of the booth this week. I went this week and I kind of just went around and kind of did a little housekeeping because as things sell, I try to replace it with more things. And in my previous video of last week, I showed y'all over 50 ways of how you can style silver pieces. Some of those silver pieces, I took them to the booth. So if y'all are interested in anything in my booth that you see and you'd like to shop online, make sure to get in touch with my friend Steven at Steven's Unique Antiques. And I will leave all of his information down below. He's got a YouTube channel. He's on all the social media. But he's very easy to get in contact with. And just let him know what, what um, item you're interested in. And he'll be happy to help you with it and ship it out to you. And a lot of the things that I made in today's video will also be for sale in my booth. So make sure to get in touch with Steven if you're interested in any of the items. I also want to give another huge thank you to Good Pick for sponsoring today's video and I absolutely love this basket. So if you're interested in, in, in good decorative storage baskets for your home, please check out their website or my Amazon store. Make sure you are subscribed to my new channel, Teresa Green, along of course with this channel. We are doing a lot over at the condo, so there's a weekly update of all the things that we've gotten done so far. So make sure to go over and check out my new channel. And as always, I love y'all, appreciate y'all, and I will see y'all again in my next video. Bye, y'all.